Hello goblins! That's Chris Eldritch Pipes. It's an episode of this week's Pipes. Had a nice week off last week. Uh, on Halloween we actually went to the Harry Potter tour studios, the Warner Brothers tour studios for the Harry Potter films. Been there, I think it was our third, maybe fourth time. We seem to go every three or four years. So maybe it was the third time. Four might be a bit much. It's worth going every couple of years because every couple of years they change. They just swap things around. Um, I don't know how much you know about the, the Harry Potter stuff, but uh, at the studios they... There's only so much room for setting up uh, scenery and monsters and props and all that kind of things. And so every couple of years they take some of the stuff out and throw some new stuff in that we haven't seen. Obviously there's some stuff that has remained the same throughout. The second half of the tour which is um, it's broken up by sort of a cafe. It's a self-led tour. I think you might be able to hang up, hang with a, some tour guide, but we never do that. You just like walk around at your own speed, which is what we like to do. And the first half is always, that's where the new, a lot of the new stuff happens. Then you have this cafe moment in the middle and then the second half is changes a little bit, but it's mostly the same. The central, the centerpiece of the second half is the um, Hogwarts school castle, which is just amazing. I love it. You just never go tired of it. It's just really, it's the, it's the actual miniature model miniature. It's huge, but because it's the entire Hogwarts grounds. Um, but you just get to walk around it and see all the intense detail. And then after that, um, there's a lot of the, uh, the monster models and um, showing you how they made the different creatures. Which is always great. So that was Halloween. And then... On the Friday, because Halloween was the Monday, uh, we did a few other things, but then on the Friday we went to the Hellfire Caves, which you should uh, you should Google it. It's a fascinating little place underground uh, in a place called High Wycombe. They um the place was mined for chalk. Uh, to lay the foundations of some of the roads around the area and the uh, the well-to-do well no one of the well-to-do decided it would be a great place to uh, wine and dine uh, you know in a kind of like morbid semi-occult style uh, which is quite fun and is, you know, said to be haunted by various ghosts. Uh, but it's a cool sort of little cave network in High Wycombe, so we went there. And of course they've leaned into the uh, the occult angle, which, you know, we were quite happy to, uh, to see as well. So uh, that was good fun. Good fun. I'm smoking. Actually, I, I was nudged to this um, blend because I saw someone post about it. I can't remember who now. I went, oh my god, I can't believe I've forgotten about that one. I got a tin of that. C&D's Cajun Cake. I 
can't believe I haven't been smoking this more frequently. It's a Red Virginia and Perique blend. So it does bear some similarities to the uh, the Carolina Red Flake, but it is stronger. I would say the Perique level seems to be higher. Coming in this wonderful plug, which just smells amazing, really funky. <laughs> But then this has been uh, aging. Has it really been aging in a C and D? Well, it's not been sealed, so probably technically not. But it still has aged, and so um, I think some of the more coarser elements have have mellowed. I remember this being. Not quite. I, I I remember enjoying it, but it not quite being my cup of tea. I couldn't imagine smoking it every day, whereas just smoking it over the last day or two, it's like, hmm. No, it is my cup of tea. Which is funny because I I don't drink tea. It's great. All right. After having last week off, it was it was lovely to get back into the the workshop. As much fun as I had, not working. I really needed to break. Actually, <laughs> last week was kind of like a breath of fresh air. But equally, getting back into the shop was a um. Well, what can I say? Being self-employed is kind of like the best of all worlds for someone of my temperament. Coming into work is just a pleasure. <laughs> it's just a pleasure. So sometimes I get worn down if I've been pushing, if I've been burning the candle at all ends, which can happen. So sometimes having that break is just like, you just need it to recharge the batteries. But getting back to work is also really good. So, three pipes to show you this week. The first one is available. The other two are commissioned. So, I had my two commissions to do and I thought, what shall I make as a third? And when I spent two seconds thinking about it, it wasn't, it wasn't that hard a decision really. A lovely chocolate sandblast acorn with some moss cumberland stem. So, if you've been secretly after an acorn for a while and haven't known when to jump at jump at it for <laughs> jump at me for one, here's one. Nicely detailed sandblast there. We've got the ring grain going on. You've got the straight grain going on. Giving that nice webbing look that we all look for. This in a chocolate, which is kind of like um, it's a, it's it's a brown that pushes quite hard into the red, but it's but it's a deep it's a deep red. So really nice warm brown. Little plateau on the rim, which is a semi 
semi-frequent feature, I would say, on, on the A chord. Just having that rim curve into the plateaus, I think, uh, kind of a nice touch. Um, full saddle stem, as per usual. And then, quite a finely figured, I mean, that makes it darker still. I guess I would need a, a lighter background. A finely figured piece of Moss Cumberland there. All right, acorn available. Um, I may have mentioned that I'll be doing the Speakeasy Pipe of the Year next year, and the numbers are starting to come in now. They've they've made their choices. It's actually going to be two shapes, Slender Man and Strawberry, tied by Chocolate Sandblast and Earth and Ivory Stem. And that's going to be coming in uh, June, July. So my June, July months next year completely blocked out. And by the looks of it, maybe even August as well. Depends how many pipes it winds up being in the end. Uh, I'm not sure. Currently, the numbers look big, about 25, but it, it all depends on how many people wind up paying the deposit. But that should be very interesting. A, if I might say, dramatic rendition of the Viking horn. This is a black and yellow contrast blast. Really, like, revealing, like, high contrast, the straight grain, which is really cool. So, uh, black and yellow contrast stain, uh, but because of the colour of briar, it kind of deepens it down. So, new, the customer, we chatted about which colour was going to match it with, and we went with olive, which does seem to be, like, the perfect match. So, some olive cumberland. Olive being one of my colours that is on the endangered list, the colours that I need to mix this. This is one of the few colours that I mix myself, but the two colours I need, well, one of them is still available, but it, this is actually a mix of three colours, and two of the three are no longer available. So, uh, yeah, I, I have as much as I have, and I've got some pigment left from the last batch that I mixed up. I don't know how much that will convert into rods exactly, so I'm unsure. But at some point this will be going away. Um, I have the possibility of ordering a bespoke colour. But how co close it will be to, the, to my olive, I, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. But we haven't come to that bridge yet, so we don't have to cross it.
just yet. All right, final pipe for today. This is a Blackthorn Billiard. If you haven't seen this one before, I made the original of this for a Four Horsemen box set. Uh, and it's proved a, a popular finish ever since, really. It's one of those ones, it's, it's, it's fun to do, but you have to start out with a much bigger billiard shape and then, and then carve down and um, yeah. But it's a fun, gnarly look. This time, paired with Red Cumberland, which I actually really like. The original one and most of the ones that I've done since the original were all done with a an amber stem. Uh, but customer, uh, Paul, hi Paul. Paul Buffington said, how about a Red Cumberland? Yeah, yeah, I think that works. So this is kind of carved, kind of lightly rusticated, I suppose is probably the best way to think about the finish, and then sandblasted to get uh, some grain coming through. And that just all helps to give this lovely gnarly look. There you go. Next week, I should have all being well. A new Four Horsemen box set. Um, it was nearly going to be available this week. Uh, I just couldn't quite get all the elements together. <laughs> I have all the pipes, but I've got to do the design for the box work, the box artwork. So I've got to do that. And then get the box ready. But I reckon I should have the, all of that done in time for next Friday. So, if you're interested in the next Forceman box set, get on your starter blocks, because um, next week should be its reveal. Alright, I think that's me done for this week. Until next week, take it very easy, your loyal pipe maker.